Oh, Dad, you seem more stressed out today. What's that all about? Theo, I'm angry. Why? I'll tell you why, Theo. Because of this bloody Premier League predictions thing. What, what's annoying about it? Actually? There's no competition, Theo, oh, because you got a pitiful mug. five points. You're such a mug. Why am I, why am I doing this? <laughs> I, I doing what, how many points did you get? I got a wonderful, phenomenal 11 points, and in second place was the brilliant Lee Chappie with nine points. Overall, 151 to the guests, 156 to Thogden, and Thogdad way out ahead with 184. And I'm hearing from Paddy Power. They're paying out on Thog Daddy. Hey, <laughs> I've won it already. Early um, payout. Hey, listen, the clever tipster puts a bet on me to do a comeback. This is comeback season, and for it, I want 20,000 likes. No way. We're I've not never, that. I've never asked for this before. I don't think we'll hit it. Wow. But if we could be hopeful, let's just go for it. You know, this trophy. It can come over to our side, the Thogden side, but it's going to need an incredible comeback, and so will the like target. It will need every single one of you to consider it and smash it. And we need a brilliant guest. I'm hoping you've got someone who's an actor and a YouTube star, Theo. I really you hope want, that's the case. You want an actor and a YouTube yeah, star? Yeah, yeah. How much you got? I mean, you, you seem like one of those... Just make it happen, Theo. Listen, I did my best, Dad, and uh, you know, I made a few phone calls, talked to my agent, I brought on bloody Chelsea Rory. Wow, brilliant. That is superb there. Well done, mate. Listen, Dad, if we're chasing 20,000 likes, the only man that can secure it is Rory. I'm telling you. Smash the like button. Bring it home. Welcome to the channel, Rory. It's a pleasure to have you on. Listen, we've got 17 games to get through today, Thog Dad. Oh, wow. We better hurry up then. Yeah, I know. We've, we've spent enough waffling in this intro. <laughs> Let's get into the games. And the first game is Manchester City against West Ham United. First against fourth. Two teams who won last week and are in Champions League positions. Man City, 19 wins in a row. Surely gonna be 20 there. Sorry, I'm just focused on this brew. What game are we watching? Oh, Man City, West Ham. <laughs> that is first versus second in the form table of the last 10 games. Yeah. These two are doing better than anybody else. You've got to back the team that midweek just bagged their 24th competitive clean sheet this season. It's unbelievable. That's Pep Guardiola's Man City. They are amazing. They're 10 points clear in the league and nobody else can catch them. But West Ham have got that man, Jesse. Lingard there. Yeah, I know. And listen, if he was to score against anybody, Man United's rivals, it's starting to make sense. There's correlations. Tell us in the comments if you reckon he's going to score. Absolutely. But I'm going to go for Manchester City 2, mm. West Ham 0. Oh, that's boring, Dad. Dad, Moyes snapped his 16 unbeaten record against Jose Mourinho last week, beating Spurs. Can he do the same against Pep? He's got a similar record. He's gone six games facing him without one win. So David Moyes is on a roll, but I'm going to have to back City as well. 2 0. And I think if KDB plays, they'll have a masterclass. And now over to Rory, who lives just up the road. Thogden and Thogdad, what an honour this is. Thank you so much for inviting me onto your channel. I am honoured. And also, thank you to the TDL. You are a very tribal and loyal uh, fan base. Previously, when Thogden has been on my channel, you have been so supportive. So it's lovely to be in touch with you again. I'm trying to emulate the brilliance of this channel that we are currently on. And I have uh, invested. I've got a little light over there. And check it out. Look what I can do. Whoa. Whoa, oh, I should have probably put some trousers on. Manchester City versus West Ham United. This is one that I think is going to be a bit of an upset. The reason is law of averages. I think Manchester City can't, they've won 19 in a row. Manchester City won, West Ham United won. West Bromwich Albion in 19th against Brighton and Hove Albion in 16th. And all I can say, this is a must win game for Big Sam and West Brom. 11 points behind Newcastle, Theo. Can they do it? You say it's a must win for West Brom, but Brighton just lost to Palace on their derby day and their XG. I mean, we could go on about XG. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what that is, right? You know expected goals thing? I think we all know that. Oh, fuck that. He's not that old. But Brighton, if they actually followed their XG, what they said, they'd be in a Champions League spot right now. It's insane. And another loss to Palace isn't great. But coming into this, both these teams are really going to want to win because West Brom are six points off worse than what they were in their 2017-18 relegation Premier League season. Yeah, and this is an important game for Brighton too. They had a good run of form, but it come to an end. Yeah. I cannot believe they lost to Crystal Palace. But you know what, I'm gonna go straight to it. West Brom won, Brighton won. I disagree, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back Brighton this time. I think XG catches up with you. West Brom nil, Brighton won, Lewis Dunk with a big goal. And let's go over to Chelsea Rory. I'm a big fan of Sam Aladici, and as a respect and a homage to this club that you both support, I am old enough to remember Bolton Wanderers competing in Europe, and therefore, as a respect to you and to Sam Allardyce, I'm going to go Sam Allardyce to get a result here. West Brom 
1, Brighton 0. Leeds United against Aston Villa, 10th against 8th. And you know what? Fantasy Premier League, I bought in Dallas, Rafinha and Bamford. They all scored against Southampton. Brilliant 8th there. I brought in Bamford and Dallas. I loved it. <laughs> I can't lie, I loved it. And I tell you what, coming into this game, Villa are without Grealish. Leeds are four games head-to-head -head against Villa unbeaten. They'll be hoping, with the home being at home and stuff like that, they can get a win today. Yeah, now Not Leeds... Have, when the game happens, you know what I mean? Yeah, Leeds have been involved in 86 goals this season. They are great to watch. And you know what? Without Grealish, I think Villa are going to struggle. I'm going straight to it. 2-1 to Leeds. It's actually gone six meetings that Villa and Leeds have played without a Villa win. And without Grealish, that's, that's not going to change. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw, but it wouldn't surprise me if Leeds win. I, I can taste a Bamford goal. Theo, there's no way you actually want to win this trophy, because I tell you what, Leeds are going to win this okay, all day we'll long. See. Let's see what Rory thinks, though. Villa have gone off the boil. Considering the creativity at their disposal, they've really gone off the boil. You know when you think, I know Grealish has been injured, but he was playing uh, recently, and they had Grealish, Barkley, McGinn, Traore. Leeds United, 2, Aston Villa, one. Newcastle United in 17th against Wolverhampton Wanderers in 12th. And I tell you what, if Newcastle lose and Fulham win, Newcastle are in the relegation zone. Surely not, though, Theo. Jesus. Well, it's never easy against Wolves recently. And, you know, even Raul Jimenez has got back to training, which is great news for him. I'm really happy to see that. And, yeah, coming into this game, I've underestimated Wolves over the last few weeks. I don't want to do it again. But you also can't write off Steve Bruce. He loves a big game. I'm just going to sit on the fence here and go for a 1 1 draw. Well, I'll tell you what, Theo, I've been very impressed by Wolves recently. They've got yeah. 10 points from four games. And the way they're playing, it's more expansive, more exciting. You know what? Newcastle nil, Wolves won. I was so close to doing that. I, but, Dad, you're underestimating the Steve Bruce. He will find a goal from somewhere. Maybe a, I, get a, I sense an Almiron goal. Well, I'll tell you what. The other day, me and Theo turned on the telly to watch a film called Cass. And yeah. Theo immediately said, that's my mate Rory. And Chelsea Rory. What are you thinking, mate? What I am desperate for, clucking for, is that fixture on the final day of the season. When Fulham take on Newcastle at Craven Cottage. What a fixture that is going to be. I think Wolves are going to win. It's going to finish Newcastle nil. Wolverhampton Wanderers 2. And now for a London derby. Crystal Palace against Fulham. 13th against 18th. And both teams won last week. I know. I'll repeat that. Crystal Palace and Fulham both won in the same weekend. Thing. It's insane. It it's never insane. happened. Well, I think the Josh Madger effect has really helped out Fulham. Him and Lookman are just ballers. They're... They're destined for the top, both those players. Yes. And the fact Scott Parker has them playing in that forward line at Fulham, I think they'll continue a really good run. But for Palace, they play very different football. It's, it's not <laughs> nice to watch. It's two shots on target, two goals, and they beat Brighton 2-1. I mean, I wasn't complaining because I had a £10 bet on Palace to win 6-1. to one. Cashed in 60 quid, don't mind if I do, I backed him. But today I'm backing Fulham because they simply play better football. And I think it'll be a Magic Lookman masterclass, 2-1 Fulham. Yeah. And we knew how scrappy it was when they were trying to go forward. You know, because they didn't have that Zaha pivot. They didn't. Now, but gonna... they still won, so what, do I, what does it matter? Absolutely. Palace won, Fulham won for me. And You've gone for a draw, I've gone for a win for the away team, but what does Rory Jennings reckon? Palace versus Fulham, kind of... The flip of what I said just now, and I have a uh, severe dislike for Roy Hodgson. He ruined my life in 2014, and he ruined it again in 2016 when I was in Brazil and France, respectively. And as a result, I think his side are going to suffer. Crystal Palace, nil. Fulham, three. Leicester City in third against Arsenal in 11th, and Leicester have won three of the last four. Arsenal have lost three of the last four. And what about Leicester without James Madison? Can they keep winning, Theo? Well, Leicester without Madison is like this brew without a bit of sugar. It just adds that extra bit of quality, you know? You don't need sugar in Turns a brew. 7 into an 8 out of 10. Listen, Madison was pivotal in that win against Villa, that 2-1 win. And without Madison, they're not the same team. It's as simple as that. Harvey Barnes has been unreal over the last few weeks. I've generally really been impressed by him, and I've got him in fantasy, and he's been cashing in for me, because not many other have him. But everyone's going to bring him in now. But is it the right time? Because without Madison helping him out and getting contributions. Will Leicester be the same team? I don't know. Arsenal, on the other hand, they lose more games than they win away from home. So it's difficult to judge this game. It's very hard to call. It depends which Arsenal's going to turn up. But I'm going to go with home advantage. Leicester City 2, Arsenal 1. I've gone for the exact same. I was very close to saying yeah. a 1-1 one, one draw. But I looked at the head-to-head -head and Leicester have been Arsenal 3 out of the last 4 times. So I'm back in the Foxes again. 2-1, love my dad. But does Rory make it a triple Leicester backing? Leicester versus Arsenal. Leicester dropped out of Europe. Means they can focus on top four. Arsenal basically have nothing to play for in the Premier League. Top half is their biggest aspiration. Leicester City will win. Leicester City 2, 
Arsenal won. Tottenham Hotspur in ninth against Burnley in 15th. It's yeah. Jose Mourinho against Sean Dyche. And do you know which of these teams has the better form? It's Burnley, Burnley. there. Yeah, and it's bad for Spurs, it really is. But I have seen glimpses of positivity in their Europa League performances versus Wolfsburg. I know people will be like, what does one Austrian team have to make a difference against these top Premier League sides? Well, I've got a feeling the likes of Deli Alley, who is starting to knock back into form, Gareth Bale, who's really been showing it over the last few weeks when he gets a shot. These are the sort of players that Jose could throw back into the first team with confidence who could maybe give them a positive effect on their Premier League results. We know they're worse, but this is their time to shine. Absolutely, Theo. And they've got to start with Gareth Bale. He yeah. looked really good in that last second half. He did. And you know what, Theo? Spurs, three points in five games. It's terrible, but that's got to end soon. It ends now. 2-0. Okay. Well, shout out to Dane Scarlett, who got an assist on Vinicius' second goal last night, or whatever night it was. I think it was last night, but a 16-year-old in Europa League performances already getting contributions. That is quite brilliant. Jose basically said in the post-match interview, like, he's going to be in the first team next year, whatever happens. I think Spurs will win this 2-0. I think this is the beginning of their revitalization, if that's a word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Spurs are going to turn back to positive form, and I think it begins here. Harry Kane and Hyung Min Son to get the goals. I tell you, if that's not a word, it should be, but what do you <laughs> think, Rory, up the road in Amstead? God, this is a clash, isn't it? This is what dull clash. This one, I'm gonna say, finishes Tottenham one, Burnley one. And now for Rory's Chelsea against Man United, it's fifth against second, and this promises to be a great game. Chelsea, yeah. 13 points in five games. That's the second best in the league there. Tuchel, well done, mate. <laughs> He's probably not watching this video, so I don't know why I'm, I'm <laughs> addressing him personally. But Chelsea fans, the ones that back the Tuchel move, yeah. you, you're, you're looking good right now because Tuchel has been unreal with his results. It was the icing on the cake getting that Atletico, not away win, but on yeah. paper it is away, but it was actually in a neutral ground. But to win 1-0 with that special Giroud finish. <sighs> Nothing could stop two shells, Chelsea, right now. They are brilliant, and Mason Mount is having oh, a mate. great season. Great player. I worry a little bit up front. I think they've got to be more clinical. Now, talking of clinical, Bruno and Rashford got a goal and an assist each last week against yeah. Newcastle. So United coming back into form, maybe. Well, actually, both these teams haven't lost a single game in the last five. Like you said, Dad, when Bruno's in your team, anything can happen. But who are you backing for this head-to-head -head fixture? Well, this is one where I've got to sit on the fence. Really? I thought long and hard, and I just went with my traditional one-all draw. Well, you know what? They've not actually played each other at the bridge in the Premier League in like a year. Yeah. It's been a year. And the last three meetings they've had at Stamford Bridge, Man United have won every single one of them. Mm. And... We all remember that Rashford goal for one of yeah. those three head-to-head -head games. That free kick was insane. But coming into this, I'm just going to sit on the fence as well, Dad. I'd love to hear what Chelsea Rory thinks about this, and uh, we'll pass it over to him in a sec, but I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw as well. Chelsea Rory, let's hear it. Uh, Chelsea versus Manchester United. This won't be, uh, this won't be a particularly uh, enthralling game. It, well, there not, won't be a classic. Chelsea are fairly dry at the moment. We don't side through anybody. But we are getting results. Manchester United, very good results against Chelsea recently. Chelsea won, Manchester United won. And now Sheffield United rock bottom against Liverpool in sixth place. And these two teams, three points in five games. And only one team has done worse than that is Southampton. Correct. But Sheffield United, surely they can't get anything from this game. Dad, I'm losing hope with the Blades. The 3-0 loss to West Ham, which they didn't even play that bad in. But to lose 3-0 to West Ham on paper is terrible. And then 1-0 to Fulham. You know, yeah. even to get a point against Fulham... It they're just too near in the table to drop three points yes. to. It's disappointing, but there really is a difference in the quality of the players. But I just want to say, before we talk about Liverpool, I want to say rest in peace to Alisson's father, oh, who yeah. tragically died. The whole situation with Klopp's mother and now Alisson's father is just, everything's hitting them at once. It's horrible, isn't it? It really is, Theo. Now, Sheffield United, 20 defeats out of 25. They are down. End of story. Let's not talk about that again. Yeah. Liverpool lost four in a row in the Premier League, which is incredible. But they were so good in Europe, Theo. And at some point, Liverpool will win and they'll win well. But having said that, Sheffield United have got a habit of losing by one goal. So I'm going Sheffield yeah. United nil, Liverpool one. And the last time they faced, this was the scoreline. Yeah. And I agree. Blades nil, Liverpool one. And yeah, my prayers go out to Alisson. Theo, you're not going to win the trophy if you keep saying the same score, mate. Rory, what do you think, mate? Sheffield United versus Liverpool. Liverpool bounce back to winning ways here, surely. 
Sheffield United nil, Liverpool two. And now Everton in seventh against Southampton in 14th. And have Everton stopped celebrating that victory at Anfield, Theo? Probably not. <laughs> Look at the limbs in the hashtag Harry streams now. They're absolutely mental. But every Everton fan, every, you know, blue side of Liverpool fan, whatever. Limbs. Mayhem. <laughs> if you win at Anfield and you're Everton, like, that's such a huge result. I like, you've think... enjoyed it. But hopefully the players haven't enjoyed it too much. So they're ready to beat Southampton at home. And the weird thing is about Everton in the big games, they do amazingly. But then sometimes they play a team like an outform Southampton at home or yeah. a Fulham or something like that, and they just seem to mess it up, like the Newcastle game. So it wouldn't surprise me if the Saints go out there and suddenly get a win and change their form because it's in the Everton's DNA this year. It's crazy. <laughs> that is true. Now Southampton went to Chelsea and got a one-all draw. Well done, Minamino. Yeah. Then they went to Leeds and got absolutely tanked. Which Southampton team is going to turn up? You know what? Everton are going to be too good, 2-0. I'm going for the same, Dad. Everton 2 <laughs> Southampton won, not the exact same, which is good, oh, because I need the points. Defensively, Southampton are so, so shaky at the back right now. Without Carl Walker-Peters playing a centre-back at full-back, it just doesn't work out in against top Premier League sides. You said shaky, I thought you were going to say something else. But over to Chelsea, Rory. I could say something else. <laughs> it would mean the same thing. Rory, what do you reckon? And the final game of this round is Monday night, Everton versus Southampton. Can Everton build on their fantastic Merseyside Derby victory. And I don't think they will. I think this one will finish 1-1. Everton 1, Southampton 1. Right, this time I'm starting it. But I'm not starting the game. I'm just mentioning we're into double game week season. So for all you guys watching it, change your fantasy Premier League teams before it's too late. Every game we speak on from this point, they're already played. It's a double game week. Take points hits. Sign these players, eh, Dad? Absolutely. Manchester City against Wolves. First against 12th. Quite simply, 2-0 to City. Yeah, well, I'm going to go a difference because I need the points. I'm going City 3-0. The way they're playing, you just can't say anything else, can you? But Rory, what are you going for, son? Manchester City versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. Manchester City will be back after their blip against West Ham. Manchester City will beat Wolverhampton Wanderers 3-0. Burnley against Leicester. I think Leicester will be too good. I'm going Burnley 0, Leicester 1. Really? You're back in Leicester again. It's a big statement. Without Madison 2, I can't see it. I think at Burnley's ground, they're going to pick some points up. It's going to be Burnley 1. Leicester won, I'm sure of it. So hopefully I picked up some points. Rory, who are you backing? We'll finish Burnley nil, Leicester three. Sheffield United against Aston Villa. There's only one winner here, and I'm going the Blades one, Aston Villa nil. No way. I think You're backing the Blades and the form they're in. I think I got a bump on the head. You know what? They're going to win occasionally, and I don't know why I'm doing this. It's not sensible. One nil to the Which Blades. Which Blades fan is holding a gun to your head, <laughs> Dad? You need to come out and tell us before it's too late. But I'm not going for the same thing. Sheffield United nil, Villa 1. It's going to happen. They still have quality in there without Grealish. Ross Barkley masterclass. And you're probably right. Rory, what do you reckon? <laughs> Sheffield United versus Aston Villa has got a 2-2 draw written all over it. Crystal Palace against Man United. And I think the Red Devils could have some fun here. Yeah. I'm sorry, Palace fans. Palace nil, Man United 2. Well, we all know what happened when Liverpool went away to Palace. There's goals in this game, so I'm going for more goals than when you went for Palace nil. Man United 3, Bruno and Rashford and even, I get the feeling someone like Daniel James may just love this game if he gets some game time. Anyway, over to Rory. Crystal Palace versus Manchester United. I think United are going to get something here. The Roy Hodgson era is limping to a close and it will finish... Crystal Palace 1, Manchester United 4. Fulham against Tottenham Hotspur. It's another London derby. And yeah. I'm going Fulham 0, Spurs 1. An early Kane goal and they sit on the lead. Okay, interesting. Well, I think the Fulham, the form they're in, I think they'll get a goal in this game. But I think Spurs will win. I reckon they're going to win both their double game weeks. So I'm going Fulham 1, Spurs 2. It's going to be closer than what people expect. We've seen this fixture have an upset before. But Rory, do you think it'll be 4? Fulham versus Tottenham. Scott Parker against his old club. I think this one will be a draw. 1-0. West Bromwich Albion against Everton. And Big Sam's going to love playing against his old team. And you know what? West Brom 1, Everton 2. Big Sam versus the foreign Big Sam. No, I'm joking, <laughs> Everton fans. Don't take that seriously. <laughs> no, they're both, they're both good managers. But obviously West Brom a lot less to play with. But I do get the feeling that they're not great at home. But I feel like Everton might drop a point here. A couple points. West Brom 1, Everton 1. Go for it. Rory, which one are you backing? West Brom versus Everton. I'm um, backing Allardyce for you, boys. I'm going to go West Brom 2, Everton 1. And finally, we've got an absolute cracker, Liverpool against Chelsea. And I'm going to sit on the fence again. Liverpool 1, Chelsea 1. It's too tempting to go for a 1-1 draw. I want to go different from you to catch up points. 
but I just know it's going to be a 1-1. Hey, listen, we brought on Chelsea Rory for the perfect double game week. Two huge games. You Chelsea fans are waiting to hear it, so let's go straight over to Chelsea Rory for the second big double game week. Can Tuchel somehow get two wins? I mean, if he does, he yeah. goes down a hero. Rory, what do you reckon? And Liverpool versus Chelsea. I think Chelsea are going to win this. Chelsea are going to beat Liverpool. Chelsea 3, Liverpool 2. Thogden, Thogdad, it's an honour. I will see you both soon, I hope. And to the TDL, brilliant. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's been great. And Theo, I've got one last question for you. Who's going to be your captain in FPL this week? It's a tough one, isn't it? Marcus Madison for Bolton. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> baller, mate. He wore a Fendi headband during the last game. <laughs> And people giving him stick on Twitter. Babs, throw it up on the screen now. So you can tell we're in a lockdown when people are crying about a footballer wearing a headband. Stop crying about it. He's going to have a masterclass against Barra on the weekend. Up the Bolton and buzzing. Who's actually your captain in FPL? Though, I'm you? thinking of bringing in Harry Kane. I okay. might just play my wild card. I need to make Ooh. seven or eight changes. It might be now. It might be time for the triple captain. So yeah. Comment down below what changes you make in FPL hits. I would recommend taking point hits this week. Loads of yeah. points up for grabs. Get Kane in. Think about Sun doubling up on Spurs. Look at the games, man. Definitely have three City. Think about signing potentially Liverpool, but we don't know how Liverpool will do. Chelsea, Everton, etc. Get those players in. Good luck. Let us know in the streams how we do. Make sure you have notifications on for the streams. And go subscribe to Rory's channel. The link's in the description. Have a great uh, weekend, or even more than a weekend. This, this game goes on for like a week, so I'm buzzing for more Premier League football. Please subscribe. Road to half a million. Every subscriber counts. 20,000 likes. Let's prove the haters wrong, and we'll see you all in a bit. See ya. That was one big gulp of a sentence, Dad. <laughs> Bye, guys.